Now, at least 45 homes in cross lanes are without power tonight after high winds sent power lines and parts of poles all over the neighborhood. And for first responders, they had to issue a shelter in place until American Electric Power could cut those power lines as they were on top of people's homes. And as News Channel 3's Kimberly Donahue spoke with one of the first responders who says he's never been in a situation like this throughout his career as a firefighter. Snapped poles, fallen trees, and downed power lines, all remnants of the high winds in the Bradley Drive subdivision in Cross Lane Saturday evening, forcing neighbors to shelter in place for over two hours. So when we arrived, we had uh, four telephone poles, power poles completely broken in half, uh, bringing down all the power lines with them. Particularly, they were high tension power lines. All them lines had landed on every single residence along Bradley Drive. They landed on top of vehicles. They landed on top of the houses. Uh, they blocked the porches, uh, doors, and some of the uh, telephone poles and transformers actually landed in people's driveways. Jaden Long with the Tyler Mountain Volunteer Fire Department says while sheltering in place is not a typical move for a small area, keeping neighbors secure had been top of mind. That was the safest thing to do. We had the high tension power lines on top of the houses, blocking the doors, blocking the porches. It was safer for the residents to just stay inside rather than trying to get them to come outside um, due to them lines possibly still being energized. Long says if you are considering taking a look at how the wind gusts may have affected your home, leave power related removal up to the professionals. Please report them and do not, you know, get close to any of the lines that are brought down and it's safer to stay inside if they brought down any lines up to your house. Kimberly Donahue, WSAZ, News Channel 3, Kanawha County. Now, Long says thankfully no injuries were reported as crews worked to clean up that debris and return power to the homes. He estimates, though, it could likely take a few days, maybe even up to two, to get everything restored.